This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Adjuster Pro. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout and get licensed right now at adjustertv.com slash licensing. Okay, let's talk about triaging claims. This is a concept that I think um, at a glance makes sense, right? So you're saying, all right, well, I'm gonna look through all my loss reports and say, well, this one looks severe. This one's, you know, major damage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this one a priority, right? Um, and this one, I mean, it's the tree on the fence. They probably, yeah, they, they could be fine without it for, you know, a while. I'm gonna put this at the back of the list. It's gonna go at the bottom of my stack. It's gonna go at the end of my schedule, right? Um, I think that that sounds good in theory, but in practice, I think there's considerations that kind of, in my experience, again, been doing this for 20 years, um, that kind of negate the whole idea of triaging claims. I don't think that, uh, again, spoiler alert here, for, you know, for, to give you the final answer, I don't think you should triage claims. And here's the reasons why. Number one, <clears throat> severity is um, a little bit of a uh, subjective concept, right? So, and it's and it's definitely something that is in the the eye and the mind of the beholder. In this case, that, that we care about is going to be the homeowner. Um, you're going to have people that will act like their house is in splinters all over the place and blown halfway down the block and it's all their personal property and their underwear drawer is all in the middle of the street and it's a, they're gonna act like that with a tree on the back fence, right? And a, a water spot on the ceiling, right? It's that to them, the severity level is, my house is destroyed and everybody can see all my, the inside of my house and it's, you know, it's, it's a nightmare, it's a disaster, right? So again, it has really nothing to do in this case in particular with how badly damaged the house is, right? Secondly, the severity of, of claims, you're, you're gonna have the vast majority of your claims for the most part are going to be low to moderate severity, right? With a, with a hand, small handful of like maybe like higher dollar claims. But just because a claim is gonna be more expensive doesn't mean that it's necessarily more severe right? Because you may have, what's a good example, right? Um, you have a tree limb that um, falls out of, it gets blown out of the top of the tree and it spears down, and I've seen claims like this, it spears right down through the back slope, puts a hole that big with a limb and it goes right into the, there's a, they have a bedroom in the attic and rain comes in, right? Um, and it causes some damage on the inside of the house. Um, that claim may be would be, could, you could consider it to be more severe than, especially if that roof is really big, more severe than a hail claim where you're replacing the whole roof, but that whole roof replacement is going to be more expensive than getting that tree. The tree limb is only that big around and pulling that thing out of there and repairing the damage and fixing the carpet and whatever on the inside. You could spend more on that uh, hail claim than you would on this. But this is this this smaller claim is arguably more severe because you know it's it's punctured the envelope of the house and it's like the elements are coming in. So these things have to kind of happen. Right. So I think it's a little bit of a kind of a misnomer to try to go through your loss reports and say, well this one looks like it's gonna be really severe and this one this one doesn't this isn't gonna be that serious, right? Or like when you talk to people on the phone, right? Because I've had plenty of claims and this is why I'm saying this. Again, the water spot on the ceiling person who, who's acting like a nuclear bomb just leveled their house, right? And then you have, I had one like this years ago um, where the guy said he had uh, weight of snow damage to the, to the attached garage on the house. And I was like, well, can you give me, there weren't, really weren't any notes on the, the loss report. Um, the guy was like, yeah, yeah, no, just, yeah, just come on out whenever you can. You know, it's, it's, uh, we're having a, a contractor just coming out here to kind of like uh, help us to protect the property from further damage or whatever. And I'm like, well, can you kind of describe the damage? He's like, well, eh, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but you'll, you'll just see it when you come out here, right? I come out there and he, he has a two-story house with a one-story attached garage on one side. The attached garage was pancaked out fully flat and with two cars inside the garage, all the snow had like, flattened and everything, there's all his personal property and their walls were all laying out. And it was, it was a severe claim, right? The guy acted like it wasn't any big deal. So trying to figure that out, like through talking to people on the phone, it's gonna be a little bit challenging, right? And then you have the people that are like, 
they have a tree limb that hit landed on the fence and maybe you do a situation where that's all it said on the notes on the loss report and you call and leave a message or you text them and then they call you back and leave a message and say hey yeah i got your message about coming out on friday at eight o'clock in the morning totally fine we'll just see you then right and then you, then you just show up right and then you get to the house and they have a tree on the fence and there and there's another big tree on the shed and there's another one right on the a detached garage and there's one laying across the roof of the house and there's one laying across the front driveway right you're going to be there a little bit longer than 30 minutes or an hour an hour and a half right that's a more severe claim than it than you can just tell best by looking at the notes right so severity is subjective and it's also not you're not going to get a really accurate um idea of like how severe a claim really is um without going out and looking at it or, or asking some more pointed questions, at least at the homeowner. And by the time you're talking to the homeowner on the phone, you've already built your schedule for the most part, right? The third component about severity and trying to triage things and, and to say, well, you know, uh, especially usually when you have like wind and windstorm stuff, it's the things that cause the most severity aside from tornadoes, are gonna be trees, right? So you're like, okay, well this guy's got, it's, it's an eight foot diameter tree and it's laying across the house or it's leaned up, up against the thing and it's, I gotta get out there, right? Cause it's severe, this is like a you know, it's triage level, you know, alpha, A1, tier, top, whatever, right? DEFCON 9. The problem with that is, is that you can't really scope that loss until that tree is off the house. And it might take them two weeks to get, to have to get somebody out there to get that tree off the house, right? So you're gonna waste your time. You're gonna waste their time and you're wasting every, your own time in particular to insist that you get out there this afternoon or tomorrow morning or whatever to get there and look at that one because it's it's severe, right? But you can't, you're not gonna be able to see the damage with this huge leafed out tree. It's laying over the house. You can't see anything. You can't get close to it. Definitely not gonna walk anywhere on it or whatever because it's, you know, it's heavy and it, you might cause more damage or fall through or whatever. That tree needs to be off of the house and the, the house needs to be secured. Um, by contractors, right? By tree guys, contractors, whatever. You could triage that and say it's severe and it's a priority or whatever, um, but trying to look at it faster, because that's the really only reason why you would triage anything, is pointless because you can't look at it anyway, right? So you kind of have to think in terms of, well, how subjective is this? Um, am I really getting severity, severity through the talking to the person on the phone or, you know, uh, the notes or whatever, and then finally, can I even access the property or even look at it until some things happen first, right? Um, so I, I don't believe in tri triaging. Um, and the, the main, those are those last two, you know, examples are really, really important and good examples. I think why I don't, why I wouldn't triage things, but the first one is really the main one, right? And you have to remember that people are busy. Like imagine your own life, right? Things are happening. You got family members probably, you got friends, you have people in your community, you're interacting with them. Some, somebody might be sick, somebody might be getting married, you know, you might, some, there's car accidents, there's um, bankruptcies, there's all kinds of things, right? It's life is happening all the time, right? And then, a storm hits, right? And then there's a water, oh my gosh, the roof is leaking, oh no, like, and that's, that, that can put, cause a high level of anxiety, and, and really in most people, myself included, right? If I see a water spot on my ceiling, I'm like, oh crap. What am I gonna do about that? Is there, is there damage I can't see? Do I need to get a new roof, right? Um, so that causes a severity level of 100,000, right? In, in most people's minds, even just having a water spot on the ceiling or having a tree down on the fence. They may have dogs, right? Or they may have horses. They may have animals and livestock and the neighbors got whatever, right? And they, that fence has gotta be fixed right away, right? Or they gotta get started on it right away. To me, when they're thinking about, when, when the homeowner's thinking about the, the, all the things that are going on in their life and their cup, their cup is overflowing with all this the, the life stuff, right? And then you add on top of that the storm, which caused some damage, and now they're like, have anxiety about that. The next thought that they have after that is, oh, crap, how I have to call my insurance company? And that's, that elevates the anxiety to, to the moon because they're convinced the insurance company's not gonna pay and they're gonna drag the process out. They're gonna have to fight for every dollar and it's gonna be, so their anxiety level is like, I mean, it's stratospheric, right? So triage, severity level, those are absolutely irrelevant to the customer experience, right? So I, everybody's a priority, right? You can only do them, if you get so many claims, you get 40 claims, you can only, there's only so many hours in a day. It's gonna take you this much time to do those claims, right? Just organize them together in the most efficient way that you can as you know as you're moving through the neighborhoods and the community right doing doing your claims and just tackle them as you go right 
You can slide people around, you can move people around as, as things pop up, as priorities. Um, but the vast majority of the time, you're gonna make your schedule and then make your phone calls, right? And then you're gonna execute on your schedule and your schedule will stay the same for the most part through most of the, of the, of the event, right? Forgetting about severity, high or low, it's all about the perception of the homeowner, the policyholder, as to how severe that is, right? And there's cer certain circumstances where you have somebody who can't handle, they, it's the feather, the straw that, broke, that breaks the camel's back, and the, the person loses it, right? The, the, everything that's going on in their life has like already got them like right on the edge, storm hits, and then they have to call the insurance company, they're over the edge, and your phone is, your ear is catching on fire because they're screaming and yelling in your ear. I'm probably gonna move that person to the front of the line just to, to get them off my plate because it's not gonna be better later, right? I'm not, if I try to punish them and say, well, you know, this guy was a jerk to me on the phone, so I'm gonna put him in right at the back, and it's, yeah, just take that, right? Now that guy is gonna be a thorn in my side for the, for up until I get him scoped. So I'm gonna front load that dude, get him off my plate, get him taken care of. And 99% of the time, that person will apologize to you for being rude on the phone. That's been my experience. Um, one final thing I wanna say about um, triage, and this is something that I heard somebody, I'm trying to remember who told me about this, um, but basically they were saying that they, uh, these were inexperienced adjusters, and these were, these were adjusters that weren't doing a good job, right? These are people, these are not the people that we wanna have doing claims that they did all the easy claims first, thinking that, um, just leaving the hard claims for later, and then they either left, the, they just quit the storm, because they, and they didn't want to do the hard claims, like the steep and highs and the, 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 the large damage ones, or they were anticipating, well, maybe I'm gonna get kicked off the storm, so I might as well try to do all the easy ones as fast as I can and leave the hard ones for later. Don't do that, that's, I mean, that's, learn the, learn the job, right? Learn how to do this work and show up and do the work. At whatever whatever the claim is, do the claim, right? Pay whatever you need to pay, whatever you're supposed to pay, you know, in accordance with the policy, in accordance with the estimated guidelines, and then customary and reasonable repairs, f you know, for whatever area you're in. Um, but do the claim right, right? And just do it. Don't just, don't triage. That's that's a waste of time. You're wasting everybody's time because it's not it's not going to ultimately it's not going to be effective. Um, if you have a different point of view on that, if you work at a, at a carrier or an IA firm or whatever, and you, there's, you know that there's some value to triaging, let's hear it in the comments, right? Or shoot me a message, adjustertv.com slash contact. Um, and let me know. I might, you know, I, I could certainly do another video about it and hit those points. But I think for the most part, because it's so variable and because there's so many like uncontrollable factors and it is so subjective, that I think triaging claims is is a waste of everybody's time. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.